Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm re-recording a video that I've already done. Uh, the last time I did it, I used the Zoom whiteboard, which it got the point across, but it's kind of messy and there wasn't a lot of room to work. So I'm redoing it here with a Microsoft uh, equation editor. And the result that I've been seeing a lot of various math platforms around the internet utilizes this truth that if you take four consecutive integers, take their product and then add one, you always get a perfect square. Again, the result states that uh, the product of four consecutive integers plus one is, is a perfect square. Now you can put it a little more tersely. Uh, this information right here, uh, it says that for any natural number, a member of Z, now Z is considered to be an integer and an integer is just a natural number, which is one, two, three, four, five, with zero and with negative natural numbers. All right, so it's the natural numbers, their negative counterparts and zero. All right, now, so what we're trying to establish is that the product of four consecutive, which is what this says right here, n times n plus one times n plus two times n plus three plus one. It's a product of four consecutive. Now this member, I like this notation, that, that result's guaranteed to be a member of z squared. It means it's gonna be an integer squared. So that, that's, that's kind of a, uh, you know, it's terse, but I think it gets the point across. Now it turns out a, a very common result that you learn in middle school math gets used the difference of two square formula right here. Uh, a minus B times A plus B is equal to A squared minus B squared. That comes in very handy for this particular problem. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, now what I've done here, this very first step is a little strange. Why did we do this? Notice all I did was rearrange stuff. This is n times n plus one times n plus two times n plus three. And I brought the n plus three around to the front so I could multiply it against n. And then I multiplied these last two, n plus one times n plus two. Now why? Because you see, you're always gonna get a linear term of three n when you do that. Now you say, well, so what? Well, it turns out to combine well with this difference of two squares formula. So let me uh, bring this up a little bit and show you how this went. All right, now, um, let's see, I think yeah, we're good there. See that okay? All right, now, y'all notice n times n plus three is n squared plus three n. All right, n times n plus three is n squared plus three n. And then n plus one times n plus two is n squared plus three n plus two. Now, I remember when I first looked at this problem long ago, I didn't, I got this far and I had no idea what to do. I didn't recognize this was the difference of two squares for the right choices of A and B. And if you take a look, they're close to each other. They both involve N squared plus three N, right? But this is plus two and this is plus zero. And so again, I'll, I'll repeat, it didn't come to me at all. I got this far and I didn't, I just didn't see that this was in the form A minus B right here. And this is in the form A plus B. Now let's go down another little bit here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, let's see, is that visible for you guys? Yeah. All right, now, so isn't that interesting, folks? If you, if you choose N squared, this piece right here, to be your A, right? If you choose that to be your A, N squared plus three N plus one, and your B just to be one, this is A minus B right here. This would be, um, this piece right here would be N squared plus three N plus one minus one, which is just that. This piece right here would be N squared plus three N plus one plus one, which is where the two comes from. So you see, we actually have it as the difference of two squares. And I'm just, for this particular choice of A, which would be N squared plus three N plus one. Now, uh, the part that I guess made a little bit confusing, you, I just didn't think of one as being a perfect square, I guess, I'm not sure. But so, so what happens right here is this one cancels with this one right here. And so we actually get that um, this original expression that we're interested in, n times n plus one times n plus two to n plus three, n plus one is actually equal to this perfect square. Now, uh, I've summarized it down here for you. This is what we've discovered. And uh, not only is this a proof, uh, it also gives a construction on, on how to find, find the solution. Uh, let, let's use a concrete example here. Um, if you choose n equals to three right here, 
when you multiply this out, you actually get 361. But if you substitute n equals 3 for n squared, 3n and 1, you actually get 9 plus 9 plus 1. That's 19. So 361 uh, is equal to 19 squared. So um, now the last thing I want to say is um, I said this held for all integers. Well, if you take a look here, it actually does. For example, uh, you might wonder if it works at zero. Well, just look, if you put n equals zero right there where the cursor is, this whole left-hand side piece right here would be zero plus one. So the left-hand side would be one, right? Now, if you put zero in for n right here, you get one squared. So it works when n equals zero. It's, it's trivial, but it, it, it's still a, a perfect square. Now, another, another example would be, what about n equals negative two? If you substituted negative two in right here for n, this entire piece right here would also become zero, right? So this would be one, but look what happens when you put minus two in here. You get four minus six plus one, which is negative one squared. So it does work for all, uh, not just natural numbers, it works for the entire set of integers. Now, you know, what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an exit video on this thing it'll actually be a problem that uses this result. So look for that when, if you complete this video, it'll automatically take you to another video that actually utilizes this result. I hope this is a lot neater than, than the Zoom whiteboard presentation. I had some views on that, but I, I just thought it was so sloppy that it was kind of hard to follow. Hopefully this made more sense. Thanks.